you are most welcome to my YouTube channel. I am still your teacher, Charles Barton Warinda. Um, in the previous episode, in the first episode, we, start, we started looking at the, word, uh, at the term histology and the subtopic histology under cell biology. Now, in this episode, um, we are going to expound more. But as you know, let us just take a few minutes to see what we what, to have a brief, uh, a brief summary of what we looked at in the previous episode. In the previous episode, we were able to see that uh, histology is head of tissues. And we're able to see that when you talk about tissues, uh, tissues are categorized uh, in two different types. And those types, we're able to see that tissues can be animal. We, can, we have what we call animal tissues. Animal tissues, and we have also got what we call plant tissues. Plant tissues. Still, in the previous episode, we were able to learn that uh, Animal tissues are of different types, and those different types were uh, we had we had what you call we had what you call uh, epithelial tissues, we had what you call epithelial tissues, we had what we call uh, connective tissues, connective tissues, connective tissues. We saw that we also have what we call muscular tissue, muscular tissue, and we also saw that we have what we call nervous tissue, nervous tissue, and then we also saw that we have also got what we call reproductive tissue. Reproductive, reproductive tissue. Reproductive tissue. We're also able to see in the previous video that uh, this epithelial tissue is made into two major categories. One, we saw that we have what we call compound, compound epithelial tissue, Epithelial tissue, and we also have what we call uh, simple epithelial epithelial tissue. Simple epithelial tissue. Uh, still, in the previous video, in the previous episode, we saw that this simple epithelial tissue is also divided into. Uh, it's also divided into. Uh, however, we also saw that before we can go to the different categories of simple epithelial tissues, we also saw that the Epithelial tissues are also divided. We also have another, another third group, which is called glandular. Glandular epithelial, epithelial what? Epithelial tissue. So this is what we saw in the previous video. We also were able to see that the same epithelial tissue is categorized into very many. We have also very many other categories. We also have other very many categories of epithelial tissues, depending on the shape of the cells that these tissues have. And in that way, we are able to see that simple epithelial tissues are categorized into are categorized into simple, simple squamous, simple squamous epithelial tissue. We also had simple, simple tuboidal, simple tuboidal. Yes, we also had another one which we are calling simple, simple, simple what? Simple columnar, simple columnar epithelial tissue. We also saw that we also have what we call we call the simple. Columna, simple, columna, ciliated, or what some people just call ciliated epithelial tissue. Then we also saw that we also have what we call pseudo, pseudo, pseudo stratified, pseudo stratified epithelial, epithelial tissue. So that's what we were able to look at in the previous uh, video. In case you, are, you have come for this video and you have not yet watched the other previous video, please I urge you that you go and check in the previous video, in the previous episode, and you get more details about all these tissues that we discussed about. Now, in this episode, I, I, I want to take you through this area. And this area, I'm going to take you specifically to the compound epithelial tissue. That's what I'm going to take you through in this episode. So, now if I expound more about the compound epithelial tissue, this is what we have. So, if I come... So from what we discussed yesterday, we saw that compound epithelial tissues, unlike simple, these are tissues which line up surfaces, but they are made up of very many layers. The, the, the cells have very many layers. So here we are saying compound epithelial tissues, these ones, the cells, this tissue consists of, consists of many layers. Many layers of what? Many layers of, many layers of cells. Unlike the simple, where we saw that the, the tissue is made up of one layer of cells. Now, 
This compound of three tissues have also got different categories. And what are those categories? Those categories are majorly two. And what are they? We have what we call, <coughs> we have also what we have what we call stratified. Stratified compound epithelial what? Epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue. And then we have got what we call transitional. Transitional. Transitional compound epithelial. Epithelial what? Epithelial tissue. What's the major difference between these two? The major difference between these two is that for the case of stratified, so the word stratified comes from the word strata. Strata means layers. So in stratified epithelial tissue here, we have got many, many layers. This one here, yes, they all have very many layers, but we are saying this one here, the layers are very many. And what do we mean by very many? Here we are talking about layers which are above, which are above four, which are above four. That means they can be as far as 12 layers of cells. So here we have got very many layers of cells. Uh, then, but for the case of here, yes, here we also have very many layers of cells. But we are saying these layers are not that many. They are around three to four layers. Layers of what? Layers of cells. Yes, they are many, but at, at least they are not many. So that's the major difference between these two. Now, let me first talk about transitional. Transitional epithelial tissues, we are, first of all, we have said that they are made up of three to four layers of cells. But apart from that, we are saying that uh, this tissue called transitional epithelial tissue um, is found in those areas, in those areas where there is need for some stretching, where there is, there is need for some stretching, uh, where we can do some stretching. For example, when you look at like uh, the lining, let us talk, let us talk, talk about the location. When you look at, for example, like the lining, the lining of the osophagus, osophagus. Here we have got, we have got uh, this kind of tissue. Why? Because at least when, when you sort of food, there is some kind of stretching within your osophagus. So we have some, we have this kind of epithelial tissue. We also have, we also have, um, we also have, uh, for example, uh, within the, the lining of the what? The lining of, of, the, of, of, of the bladder, of the urinary bladder. Here I'm talking about urinary bladder. Urinary bladder here. You never, whenever you, uh, your bladder is getting filled up with blood, there is some kind of stretching. Yeah, so this one has got a few, a few layers of cells which can allow some stretching because when the layers are too many, uh, stretching may not be effective. So that's why, it, uh, that, that's why these areas where there's need for some stretching, we find there such kind of, uh, such kind of epithelial tissue. Now, the, somebody might be asking that why are they called transitional? They are called transitional, why? Because in the process of stretching, these cells tend to kind of change. They, uh, they tend to transition. Why? Depending on the stretching. For example, in cases where the stretching is too much, in cases where the stretching is too much, these cells, uh, especially the, the, the outermost area, which is the outermost, tend, the cells tend to become more squamous. Why? Because of the too much stretching. However, sometimes when the stretching is not that much, for example, when the blood is not yet that full, then the, the, the cells tend to become chuboido. They tend, they, tend, they tend to be chuboido in shape. So that's why we call it, that's why, we are called, that's why it is called transitional. Why? Because the cells tend to transition, tend to change into different shapes depending on, uh, depending on the stretching uh, in those areas where these tissues are found. That's something which I can talk about transitional uh, compound epithelial tissue. Now, if I come back to the stratified, I've told that the stratified, here we have got very many layers of cells. Now, we are saying that um, because of very many layers of cells, uh, in most cases where we have this kind of uh, uh, tissue, the major importance is to provide protection. Mm? This one here, major provide protection. The very many layers are for providing, for providing protection. And we are saying, just like any other epithelial tissue, all these cells come from a basement membrane. And we are saying that because of very many layers, uh, the cells, the, the cells, Maybe another thing that we maybe I need to talk about between this one and this one is that unlike stratified, the cells in the, the transition epithelial tissue here, the cells, the cells are of uniform, are of uniform shape, are of uniform shape and, and size. Leave alone the, the issue that I've told you that when, when it is stretched, the cells kind of kind of changes. But apart from that, 
the cells are more or less of uniform shape, of uniform shape and uniform and uniform size. But when you come here, here the cells, the cells have have different have different shapes, have different shapes. That's why um, when you try to make more reading and so on, you find some literature that uh, even goes further and breaks down this uh, stratified epithelial tissue and you find, you find yourself having other subcategories. Why? Depending on, the type, on, depending on the shapes of the cells, especially those cells that are on the outermost layer, because you have said this one is made up of very many layers. So you find that the outermost, depending on the shape of the outermost cells, the cells in the outermost part, or in the outermost layer, you find that now, that one gives now the different types of stratified compound epithelial tissue. That's why some literature will say that, for example, the simple epithelial tissue we can have where you have stratified, stratified, but which is squamous. Stratified but squamous compound epithelial what? Epithelial tissue. So it means in this, it means in this case, the cells, the, the layers are very many, but when you look at now the layer which is in the outermost, the outermost layer, you find that the cells are more of, they are more thin walled, they are more flattened, and therefore that's what we call, that's why we call it stratified but squamous. Likewise, in some areas you find that yes, you have a, a tissue which is having very many layers, but you find that the outermost the layers, the cells in the outermost layer, they are more of tubic. And therefore, that one gives us now, for example, the stratified, the, stra the stratified, the stratified tuboidal, tuboidal compound epithelial tissue. Compound epithelial what? Epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue. Yeah, so it means now in this case, the cells in the outermost layer are, are tuboid in shape. Then we can also have stratified, stratified, stratified columnar, you know, columnar. So it means in this case, uh, columnar compound epithelial tissue. So it means in this case, in this case, the cells, the cells within the outermost layer are more of column-like. So depending on the shape of the cells which are in the outermost layer, that's, how, that's what gives us uh, this other category that come in. But basically, we are saying that the stratified epithelial tissue are made up of uh, they, are, they are made up of cells which are uh, which have very many layers beyond uh, over to around all of there, and we are saying that uh, these cells have different shapes, and depending on the shape of the outermost layer, or depending on the, on the shape of the layers of the cells within that layer, especially in the outermost layer, you have got all these different types of what these types we have got other these, these different sub, subdivisions of this same type of tissue. Unlike transitional, where we are saying we have a few layers, that is three to four layers, and we are saying uh, they are found in those areas that need some, that, that do kind of, kind of stretching, and we are saying because of the stretching, that one makes the what? It makes the, the shape, it, it makes the, uh, the shape to keep on changing a bit depending on the stretching, whereby we have said when it over stretches, uh, the shapes become more squamous, and when uh, the stretching reduces, the cells become more of tuboidal. But otherwise, the cells have, have got the uniform shape, and have got of this, have got uniform size. So this is a simple summary in as far as compound epithelial tissue are concerned. In the next video, we are going to break down another type of epithelial tissue, which is called the compound epithelial tissue. If you are watching us for the very first time, please don't forget to subscribe. And I know that you will enjoy, and I know that you have also already enjoyed. Thank you very much. May God bless you.